I'm sorry, but Councilman Ryan will not be making any statements till the polls have closed. <laughs> what do I think? I think he's gonna win, of course. Don't you? <laughs> as long as you vote for him. Some idiot over at the press service did not vote for Frank. Did you get his name? Martin. Carton. We'll find him. Oh. <laughs> we'll find him and we'll string him up by his thumbs. I opened up the phone lines for that. One of the best things of primary day is that you have nothing to say to the press. Oh, poor Georgia. Anyone who tried to get through to us is probably calling her. Ah, but they have volunteers over at their office, whereas we just have our talented selves. <laughs> we did pretty well today, didn't we? Yeah. I even remembered to vote. Boy, I wish I'd re-registered in time. But I think I still deserve to go to the party. You sure do. I would have gone crazy without you. It's really working. Us? Yeah. Without any hair pulling. Who would have believed it? I thought you turned off the phones. Gad, I must have pushed the wrong button. Oh, yeah, well, I'll just get this one quickie before we close up. Riot for Senate. Uh, this is the press office. Bob, any news? Uh, how's the turnout? What does that mean? Uh-huh. Well, let's not get down about it. Okay. Okay, I'll see you at Ryan's. Bye. What? Well, it's a lighter turnout than we thought, which probably isn't good for Frank. But as of now, he's ahead. Oh, he's going to stay ahead. Think victory. Spoken like the true daughter of Maeve Colliery Ryan. Phone's out of order or what? Well, we turned him off for a while. Hi. What's the matter? Take a look at that, and you tell me. Well, I know what this is. This is our press release. We wrote it. Yeah? You wrote that? Sure. Yeah. You're not glad to see me. Yeah, I am, but I thought maybe you were Miriam. I'm still good company. Yeah. Come on in. Ah! <laughs> you got my message. What? Telepathy. About 15 minutes ago, you got a sudden urge to take off your shoes, right? No, sorry. I was just hey, putting hey, them hey, on. don't do that. What do you mean? You want me to walk around barefooted? Well, you're not going anyplace. I mean, what about Edmund? Well, he's, he's asleep. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not leaving him without a babysitter. But Miriam, I can't seem to find, and I've got to go see Faith. So I thought about Mrs. Shander, and even though she's just down the hall, I don't think I should walk down the hall barefooted. You don't like Mrs. Shander? Uh, when you're in a pinch. OK, OK, I'll tell you what. I will sit with Edmund. In return, you take off your other shoe. What? Barefoot for at least five minutes, okay? You know, you're a really, uh, really strange man. I won't argue about that. Come on, come on, off with the other shoe. Oh, what I won't do for a babysitter. Plus, my rates are so reasonable. <laughs> Uh-oh.
What have you done? Well, a funny thing happened on the way home from neurology. See, I was walking along, looking at the store windows, thinking about you and Faith, how rough it's been on you, her being so sick and all. Yeah, fever's up again. Yeah, every time I pass the room, there you are, scared, waiting. Anyway, I had all that on my mind, and I suddenly realized I had stopped. Now, I realized I had stopped because I saw my reflection in the jewelry store window. Oh, well, pretty soon I started looking at all the nice things on display. Okay, and... okay, stop. Right there, stop. Now, I, I know that I can't say no to all of these things, but uh, I can uh, take one, and you can take the other four back. You don't even know what they are. Well, it doesn't matter. I thank you, and I won't even open those. No, but, see, they're a set. I mean, they go together. What? See for yourself. What? It's, uh, it's supposed to be little. Oh, well, it's lovely. Come on, come on, open the rest. This <laughs> is... Are they? Feet up. <laughs> Toe rings, you madman! You're insane! There you go, see? It's already <laughs> making you laugh. Oh, you know, don't, wait a minute, you're tickling hold me. Hold still, hold still, hold still. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, my goodness. Now, how, how did I know that would fit? <laughs> the same way you knew that I would like them. Do you? Are you kidding? They are absolutely frivolous. Well, see, that was the idea. <laughs> Come on, let's try the rest. <laughs> oh. What are you writing there? It's her latest white count. What is it? 24,000. It was 22 this morning. Yeah. She's dying, Roger. When are you going to start doing something for her? Tom, we're fighting as hard as we can for her. We're not going to give up. Tom? I I'm with you, love. I'm right here beside you. No, don't. I'm angry. I'll tell. Uh, nobody's angry now. Don't be frightened. Uh, Tom, I'm going to call Dr. Post again. Why don't you uh, go outside and call Jill? She isn't dying. It's just that she's worse, and Jill wants us to keep her posted. Oh, Tom. You call her. I have a nurse call her. I can't leave her. She keeps trying to tell me something, and if, if she can say it and I can understand it, I know that she will rest easier. Tom, she doesn't know what she's saying. Believe me, they're just random words. No. Tom. Now, leave me alone, Roger. All you're doing is communicating your anxiety to her. Oh, please. Please, oh. make the calls. Ryan, Riverside's candidate for the United States Senate and the favorite in Tuesday's primary, was reported to be having a torrid love affair with his campaign manager. Where did you get this? It was hand delivered today. Maybe Mary brought it home by accident. No, I mean, I tore it up. I tore it up this morning. Did you make a copy? Me? You typed it up. A copy for what? I don't know, but this is not what I sent out. I was showing Ray the original a little while ago. I, I have the original and a copy. Uh, uh, hold it, hold it. You did write that stuff? Oh, well, it was a we joke. Were crazy. We were sitting it in here. Uh, both of you. Uh, it came from this office, right? No. I mean, it was just a private joke. We were just kidding around with Frank and with Bob. We never intended to, to circulate it. We wrote a serious release be later, and which we sent to you. Yeah, I made six copies. I sent five. Five for the, the columnists and one for our files. Somebody must have made another copy and sent it to you because you're part of the family and you read it and laugh and then, you know, throw it away like I did. <laughs> Honestly, I threw away the original. Frank must have made a copy for Jack. That's got to be it. Maybe you, you duplicated the wrong release. Oh, come on. You think I'm insane? Maybe four men who are not family now have that slander sitting on their desks. Maybe the morning news will ha tell the world about the primary winner's love affair with Ray Woodard. Oh, stop it. 
I sent the right release and I'll prove it. Yeah, who are the other four writers? Um, Hampton, Flanagan, Wiseman, and Leonard. Okay. Oh. All right, look at this. This is the original of the good release in one copy. Frank Ryan, Riverside's candidate for the United States Senate and the primary blah, 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 etc. Frank Ryan was reported to be... His torrid love affair. Siobhan, you've ruined him! Oh. Yeah, that's right, cry. You better cry. Oh, hey, 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 enough now. Uh, he's not ruined yet. Now, I know all those guys personally. I can talk to them. Yeah, tell them what? Tell them that, that they, they should forget that they saw it? That they should just pretend that the whole thing didn't exist? Uh, I'll, that... I'll tell them that it was a joke and that you'd like to have it back. They're human beings. Now, why shouldn't they listen? Because they are newspaper men. Nobody in the right mind would give up a story that big. It's not a story, Mary. It's a joke. Now, Frank's a big man. He's a front runner. Nobody wants to alienate the new senator from New York. Now, I'm pretty sure that I can get the cooperation of three out of four of them, at least. You gotta have them all. Yeah, well, I, I suppose I can handle Wes Leonard, too, but he's not exactly all heart. Please, would you try? Sure, sure. Hey, 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 it's not the end of the world. You hear what I was telling Mary? So. Well, take it easy, huh? Show me how to open that phone. I still think maybe you were the only one it was sent to. It is possible. Shouldn't we at least check with Frank? Honey, if it was just a joke that Frank sent me, then I would have got the release that you prepared, too. But I didn't. Now, all I got was, was that one. Now, even so, I'll sound him out before I go into it, just in case that you're right, huh? Tell them that, that I'll come by and pick up the copies. I'm sorry. Hi, Max. Jack Finelli. Okay. Look, I was wondering if you received a press release from Frank Ryan. Uh... Oh, God, how could I be so stupid? Try an unconscious desire to cause trouble. That is rotten. It really is. Well, you would ask me. The only other explanation that I have is that you are a total fool, and even that I can't swallow. Thank you. Siobhan, I don't want to hurt you. I have no idea why you did it. I just hope for Frank's sake and for your sake that Jack can fix it. Not only uh, ignore the joke, but uh, send it back. Tell him I'll, I'll come by and get the copy. I'll, I'll be there in half an hour. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate it. Anything I can do for you anytime. Yeah. Uh, no comment. Right. Bye. Said yes. Yep. Three down, one to go. Mm-hmm. The worst one. Listen, if Leonard give us any trouble, tell him there are a lot of Ryans that would make it their personal business to come uh, down. Uh, 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 uh. We're in no uh, position to threaten, especially not Wes Leonard. Now, with him, we negotiate. I must not yell. I must not yell. Maybe I should go now. Where? To pick up the copies from Flanagan and, and uh, Wiseman, Hampton. No, I will. Do we have their addresses? Oh, Wes Leonard, please. Uh, Jack Finelli speaking. You can uh, always go tomorrow. Believe it or not, how are you? I'm all right. To what do I owe the honor? Well, I have a little problem. Well, actually... Listen, uh... if you wrote it, congratulations. I think it shows real promise. I gather it was a collaborative effort from a bunch of people here at the office, including Frank, a little uh, late-night crazy. Yeah, well, well, he had my vote already, but this really caps it. Listen, I, it, next family dinner, do me a favor and tell him right on for me. It, uh, it was a private joke, Wes. It, it was sent to uh, 
to you and me by mistake and, and three other guys. Now, we've already got back four copies. Yours is the last. Well, look, I had no idea how I was going to use it, but if nothing else, I'd like to frame it and hang it on the wall here. I think it's terrific guts ball. Actually, uh, it's a lot of trouble. Or could be. You see, see, Frank doesn't know yet about the mistake, and we'd like to correct it b before he finds out. See, that way he won't have to worry, and my sister-in-law won't be shot at dawn. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Ryan would worry. So that means it's true about the affair with Lady Woodard. It's your standard meat market gossip. People around here laugh a lot about it. Uh -huh. uh, but, but the problem is if, if, if it's taken seriously by outsiders, you see, like you're starting to do. OK, all right. Well, moving on to the sister-in-law. She's the one that goofed, huh? Yeah, hey, uh, she's here right now in acute panic. Yeah, I take it she's kind of slow. No, no, on the contrary, she just duplicated the wrong release. Now, she's sitting here listening and, and wondering if uh, you know what it's like to work in a press office where you can barely hear yourself think, let alone keep track of the mails. Yeah, well, tell her I sympathize with her on that. Is she pretty? Oh, well, not when she's miserable, but uh, you can make her smile again. What do you say? Well, does she look anything at all like Mrs. Finelli? Siobhan's vital statistics are uh, none of your business. Uh, not this call, anyway. Uh, if you would exchange the, uh, the put-on release for uh, this serious one, I'd take it as a personal favor. Well, I think I'd be much more inclined to do a personal favor for Siobhan. Do you suppose she could come down here and ask me very nicely? You can go yeah, look, just tell her that I'll be here for, oh, about an hour or so. He wouldn't negotiate? Oh, he'll negotiate. Your body for his copy. I'll get it, I'll get it. I have to send Jumbo down there to collect that damn thing. He actually suggests... He suggested that Siobhan come down to his office in person and ask for it herself very nicely. Now, what do you think that means? Jack, I don't mind talking to him. What are you, 10 years old? He doesn't want to talk. I can take care of myself. If I can live alone and picket and be sent to jail and hitchhike across the country from Seattle, I can manage Wes Leonard. Where is his office? No. Look, she could do it. He would not dare hurt Frank's sister. Your mother wouldn't be safe with him. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, this whole thing is my fault, and I will do anything to make it right. You will not. Oh, I didn't mean that. At least let me talk to the man. Yeah, let her. Listen, uh... Oh, Mr. Leonard, please. Y Hello, this is Siobhan Ryan. Well, hi. Very funny piece of work. Thanks. Can I have it back? Well, listen, why don't we have dinner together and discuss that? Miro's, West 48th Street, what do you say? Yes to dinner, no to Miro's. Uh, why don't you come up here to my neighborhood? Do you know Lem's? Yeah, well, that's by the hospital, but that's that's much too far for me to travel at this time. Oh, well, there's a private victory party for Frank tonight at Ryan's. Uh, I can bring a guest. It's only a, a two-block walk from Limbs. Is your husband going to be there? I haven't got one of those. Well, then I'll see you in an hour. Look for a man with a red carnation. Bring the release! At least I got him on my turf. Siobhan, it's a bad idea. I'll be careful. And I'm going to walk away with that piece of paper. but I want to wear them to work. Well, one thing I didn't find out is uh, how they go with shoes. You wear sandals. Would you have enough nerve to walk into your office with rings on your toes? Well, I know a lab uh, technician that wears a ring in her nose, and a male intern that wears one in his ear, and lots of women wear two, three pairs of earrings. 
And if I don't have the nerve to do that, I'll just walk around the apartment. And entertain Edmund. <laughs> Edmund will be enchanted. Like me. Thanks. For the kiss? For everything. Oh, Seneca. What is it? I'm scared. Sorry. Faith? Faith, Edmund. Trying to balance everything. Hey. <laughs> Whatever happens, you're not alone. I want you to remember that. I love you, and I'm always here for you. Excuse me. <coughs> Hello? Hi. Uh, look, Faith's weaker, and her fever is still creeping up. Uh, can you come over here? Yeah, I was just planning to. What do you think, honestly? I don't know. I go back and forth between thinking that we'll, we'll lose her and worrying about her future for Tom. Look, she's, she's out of her head, and I'm afraid she's going to say something and let her own secret out of the bag. I, I don't know what's going to happen, Jill. I'd, I'd just like you to be here. I'm coming. Where's Tom? Well, he's in there with her. Look, I've got to get back. Uh, I'll see you soon. Okay. Faith's worse. What's the white count? They don't know, but the fever is up, and he's... he's frightened, Roger. I can't believe she's gonna die. I mean, today, with antibiotics and, and the kind of treatment that she's getting... Hey, hey, hey. Don't even think about that. Whatever it is, you can tell me. I want you to. But the... the boat... It was an accident. Oh, please. Don't tell, please. What if you could change your past? Erica does every week because sometimes the only way to move forward is to go back. A new original primetime drama, Being Erica, Thursdays at 10 on SoapNet.